I hope you're well. In this one, I want to talk a little bit about some alternatives to genuine birch plywood or Baltic birch like this. So a little while back, I made a video about birch plywood basics to try and get to the root of why it has such appeal to us as makers and as woodworkers. And if you're new to woodworking or to plywood and sheet goods generally, it might well be worth taking a look at that as I go into all the details as to why it has such appeal and what makes it so attractive to us. The long and the short of it though is that we all love a bit of birch plywood because it looks fantastic. It requires no special edge treatment and until recently it was one of the best value and most accessible quality furniture boards around. But not anymore and over the course of the last few videos I've been using a couple of boards that are being touted as alternatives to birch ply alongside some genuine birch ply while making the drawers for my workshop cabinet. In particular I've been using uh, birch faced poplar plywood sometimes called tulipwood plywood and some maple veneered reinforced globulus plywood, a new board from manufacturer Garnica that you may have seen being heavily promoted across social media and seems to have been manufactured specifically as a birch ply alternative. I bought a sheet of each of these boards in 18 millimeter or three quarter inch thicknesses specifically for this project because I wanted to try them out on real work with my own money at stake. In fact, let's start with the money, let's start with the prices. I mentioned in the previous video that I was getting quoted over £200 a sheet for 18mm birch ply now. Well I paid £180 for the sheet of Garnica maple face board and £170 for the birch faced poplar so they're certainly not cheap alternatives, let's say less costly and leave it there. And what do you get for your money exactly? Well the birch faced poplar is a standard poplar plywood with wafer thin commercial veneers applied to each face. Poplar gets used a lot in caravan and camper fit outs, van conversions, RVs and so on because it's so lightweight typically less than two-thirds of the weight of the same thickness birch ply. But of course that lightweight means it's not as dense and that can be an issue when machining and jointing it. I use the birch faced poplar ply for the draw boxes in the workshop cabinet build simply for aesthetic reasons the maple looked better basically but it wasn't a great choice to be honest because of the lack of density the softness of the material for example on the bottom drawers I used peanut two connectors to attach the fascias to the draw box and in some detail shots in that video you can see the peanut fixing being pulled into the edge of the material when it's screwed down the material is that soft I have to say that none of that caused me any major issues but I still didn't feel right having a board that soft so soft you can actually mark it with your thumbnail. Of the two alternative boards the poplar has the fewest number of plies just seven core layers in an 18 millimeter thick board so it's not the most attractive of edges to look at especially when you also see the paper thin face veneers too and it was the better looks of the globulus maple ply that made me choose it for the draw fascias. The maple veneer on this board is absolutely magnificent as perhaps it should be at 180 quid a sheet but it is clean and clear of any patches with a fabulous grain pattern that really pops under the simple wax finish that I applied. It, it is thin though, more on that later as well and there are nine core plies on this board which is at least a step up from the seven in the poplar ply and closer to the eleven that you get in birch ply. Unfortunately those nine cores are nothing like as fabulous as the maple faces with the plies showing voids and dark patches and unevenness too like mini tectonic plates that have shifted and folded under pressure, all the things in short that we buy birch ply to try and avoid. Now I'm not being naive about this, even in a man-made board you're working with a natural material so of course there'll always be some visible defects but with birch ply at least you just have a better hit rate so there's less chance that you'll expose some edge nastiness when you cut into a sheet. Back when I did the basics video I mentioned that one of the huge benefits of birch ply was that the face veneers, though admittedly thinner than the core plies, the face veneers were significantly thicker than those found on commercially veneered boards and I did have some concerns about the thinness of the commercial veneers on these two alternatives. I did have some issues but oddly not the ones that I was worried about. My main concern was sanding and general damage to the faces with the veneer being so thin but actually it was cutting and machining the boards that gave me the most problems. I do all my cutting with a track saw and I found that I get the best results when the cut depth is set so that the tooth on the blade 
doesn't actually exit the material. I've done a whole video about this. It's part of the Traxor Workshop series. I'll link the playlist in the video description down below. I thought it was a load of old pony when I first heard about it as well, to be perfectly honest, but it really does make a difference. Anyway, over the decade and more of Traxor use, that's what I found works best for the materials that I use, but using that approach on these veneers resulted in that kind of really stringy, unpleasant edges that you can get sometimes when you don't have the cut depth set quite enough. And true enough, setting it a little bit deeper so that the tooth came all the way out of the material, that really did make the difference. Similarly, cutting cross grain veneer resulted in a slightly furry edge, more so than usual, even with a freshly trimmed splinter guard, though that furriness was easy to remove with a sanding block, provided you're not too heavy handed. Machining the grooves for the draw base to slot into caused a few issues with splintering, and while it was easily resolved with a sacrificial face on the fence, it's still one more thing to be aware of and worth mentioning, perhaps, that I've never had these kind of issues with birch ply, where the thicker face veneers do seem to be much more resilient. I used 6mm birch ply for the draw bases, partly because I had some, but partly because when I first looked it seemed that poplar and maple ply weren't available that thin. The maple face ply only goes down to 9mm thickness, but I've since learned that you can get thinner poplar plywood, but it's more of a specialist order. Now I've got to be honest, I thought that Globulus was one of those made up marketing names from around the globe. But no, it turns out that Globulus is just the fancy name for Eucalyptus. And this reinforced Globulus ply is actually a mix of Eucalyptus and, yes, Poplar. So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with a couple of boards that whilst currently a little less costly than birch ply, I really don't feel are good enough to be considered as an alternative. Let's get the poplar out of the way first. It's a decent enough plywood, but frankly, nothing special unless you're after a particularly lightweight board. And slapping a birch veneer onto it absolutely doesn't change that. And what about the reinforced globulus maple? Is that truly the best alternative to birch ply? Well, if my experience is anything to go by, then only in a parallel universe where we've never actually experienced proper 11 core birch. As I said earlier, the maple faces look lovely, but it's let down by the cores, which are currently nothing to write home about. Call me picky, but if I'm being asked to pay almost the same as the currently inflated birch ply prices that we have now, then the board needs to be an alternative in more than just availability. That's what I think anyway. Let me know what you think down in the comments, but I'll be continuing my search for a viable birch ply alternative in future videos and I'll be sure to let you know whatever I find. I'll call this one done for now though. Thanks so much for taking a look. If you want early access to those videos and a host of other exclusive content, be sure to join us over at 10 Minute Workshop Plus. But that's all for this one. Uh, thanks again for stopping by. I'll see you again very soon.